Where's the telephone? Where's the telephone? Uh -oh. Have you enough change? Uh-huh. Long distance? I want Los Angeles, Academy 4632. And reverse the charges. Hmm? Oh, Humphrey Campbell. Yeah. Clark, Missing Persons Bureau. It's Mr. Campbell calling long distance. He's reversing the charges. Campbell reversing the charges? Long distance? All right, I'll take it. Listen, you adult, pay the dunderhead. head. Why haven't you reported? Oh, stop beeping, will you, Oscar? I'm reporting now. What about that missing girl, that Louise something or other, that you went looking for two weeks ago? Oh, I found her, but I'm not bringing her back. <laughs> he says your father's worried about you. Hello, Mr. Flack. This is Louise. Oh, that double-dyed lunatic was assigned to find you and bring you in here. But I only ran away because I was bored. And she isn't bored any longer, boss. We were married this morning. I sent you out to find people and you marry them. Oh, suppose you marry everybody and send you out to find. <laughs> Oscar's giving us his blessing. Why, thank you, Mr. Flack. He says he has some important work for you. Now, get this, mastermind. Mr. and Mrs. Humphrey Campbell are leaving at once on their honeymoon. For a lovely two weeks. And we want to be... Hello! Alone. Yes. He's just a gas tank in pants, that's all. Trace that call. Trace that call! Say, if we're going to Reno, I better get a check cashed. Come on. How much do you usually spend on honeymoons? What? I'd like to get a check cash for $100 if the bank has that much. <laughs> well, when you have it, all right, if you can convince us. May I see your identification? Sure. Stick them up, high in the air. Outside, all of you. Come on, step on it. Come on, chum, all of you. Aren't you going to do something? You're a detective. Let's keep it a secret. Where you go? Come on, get over there, you two. I know you from somewhere. Not me, pal. I'm a stranger in town. Yeah? What's your name? Humphrey Campbell. Are you sure? Why don't you show him your driver's license? Sure. Keep your hands where they are. Sorry. What's he sore about? Redheads are like that. Temperamental. Oh. That's your car outside? Yeah. Where are you headed for? Reno. Where are you headed for? We don't know yet. Where would you suggest? Well, fishing's very good around San Quentin. That's out. I ain't got no fishing license. Can it, Alex? Any one of you make a move before our car gets out of here? I'll let you have it. Operator, send the police to the Linden Bank. There's been a holdup. Come on. But are we going to wait for the police? On a honeymoon? What would I want with a policeman? <laughs> We don't care what time it is. Maybe I should have waited till I knew you better. <laughs> this way I'm full of surprises. For one thing, I'm a terrific accordion player. Listen. Oh, Humphrey, what are the neighbors think? Why do we care about the neighbors? Oh, darling. Room service. I shouldn't have ordered that milk. Humphrey, my boy, congratulations. That's all I needed. Well, well, well. Congratulations. I'm Oscar Flat. Flat, missing persons bureau. Humphrey's boss. The bride, no doubt. How do you do? <laughs> Don't give him your hand. He never gives anything back. Did I surprise you? No, oh, we were expecting you, Oscar. How the devil did you find us? I was finding people when you were still wearing three-cornered pants. But this is my honeymoon, Oscar. 
I flew up. Traced your call. Anybody going to Linden on the honeymoon was certainly heading for Reno. Humphrey, I think that was very clever. Oh, Oscar's clever, all right. He gets all the cases and I do all the work. It happens, Mrs. Campbell, that I need Humphrey on a very important case in, in this locality. Just don't pay any attention, darling, and maybe it will go away. This client, Warren Benedict, is one of the richest men in Nevada. Ranches, mine. Drink your milk, honey. Oh, darling, I never touch milk. It poisons me. It gives me a terrible rash. How'd you like a no mink coat? I'd love it. Don't listen to him, honey. All we have to do is find Benedict's son. Shouldn't take over a couple of hours. A couple of hours. When does the mink coat come in? Just convince Humphrey he should assist me and the mink's yours. I know a name for you, Oscar, and it isn't mink, but that's close. Humphrey, just a couple of hours. That's all. Darling, we can spare a couple of hours, can't we? After all, a mink coat. All right. Where are you heading, stranger? When you call me that smile. This, uh, this is the West Ranch, isn't it? Maybe. You got business inside? Well, maybe. Come, come, young man. We have an appointment with Mr. Warren Benedict. Uh, ranch house about a half a mile up the road. Thanks, partner. Mr. Flack, I'm so glad you've come. My assistant, Mr. Campbell. I'm Mrs. West. How do you do? Mr. Benedict thought it more convenient to see you at my place. Won't you come in? Thank you. Warren. Oh, Warren. The gentlemen are here. You didn't have any trouble finding us. Not after your watchdog let us through. Oh, Harry Belding, he's my foreman. He's taking this thing a little too seriously. Not at all, Marion. This is serious. Very serious. Mr. Benedict, Mr. Flack. Mr. Flack? Uh, and Mr. Campbell. How are you, sir? Campbell. Well, gentlemen, sit down, sit down, sit down. Right. I, I suppose it isn't necessary for me to say that I want you to find my son, Hal. He's been missing two weeks today. Last Thursday, I received this. Mm hmm? <clears throat> Ooh. Did you go to the police? No, of course not. Warren, why don't you tell them? Two men came here to ask about Hal a week after he disappeared. I think they were FBI men. FBI? You can include me out on this one, Oscar. Now, hold on, Humphrey. You can't walk out and... This is no routine disappearance that can be settled in a couple of hours. Mr. Campbell, I don't understand. Mr. Flack told me you were the best man he had. Please disregard it, Mr. Benedict. Just a trifling domestic complication. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Mr. Campbell, I'm worried about my son. If he's in trouble, I want to find him so we can do something about it. All right, Mr. Benedict. Where does your son hang out in Reno? He spent a lot of time in the Truckee River Hotel, in the Nugget Room. Who's he usually with? Well, the last time I ran into him, he was with several people. One of them, I think, was a Mr. Copley. Copley? What does he do? He's a private investigator. He works for a lot of the divorcees. How about women? Running around with anyone? With me. Rose, please come here. I told you it would only complicate matters to call in detectives. This is my ward. She and my son were to be married in September. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. We can skip the woman question. If you have a picture, Mr. Benedict, it might help us. Yes, I have. Here. Thanks. Han left here for home. He never arrived. Excuse me. You can contact me at the Truckee River Hotel. If anyone should ask, I'm a writer. You know, an old acquaintance. Mr. Benedict, there's a matter of expense money. Why, certainly. How much? Five hundred. Well, a thousand will do for the present. You see, it's always customary to have an advance fee when taking yes, a case. Yes, of course. Here you are. Mr. Campbell, I'm counting on you. I'll do my best, sir. You're counting on a very reliable firm, if I say so myself, Mr. Benedict. 
I can take you back to a case. Come on, Oscar. Thank you, and good day. Goodbye. Good night. We'll find our way out. Thank you again. I have a theory that Hal Benedict... Yours? Yours? And yours. Sir Bud, know a fellow named Hal Benedict? Yes, sir. He's been in the hotel lots of times. Uh, who with, mostly? Well, I shouldn't, uh... Oscar? Yeah. Well, mostly there was a redhead with him. A redhead, huh? Who was she? Dave Paulson might know. He plays the piano in the Nugget Room. He knows everybody. Thanks. Can you jive on that thing? Sure. Come up sometime and I'll jive you a concert. Thank <laughs> you. I will. Where are you going? To find out about a red-headed woman. But, darling, you just got back. You want that mink coat, don't you? Yes, but I thought you were looking for a man instead of a redhead. If you don't trust me, you can come along. Oh, good. Wait till I put on a new face. I'll be just a minute. You don't want her along when you're sure chasing la femme? No, I don't, really. Go ahead. I'll keep her company. No, just vacationing. I'm a writer. A writer? Oh, writers interest me. My name's Toland, and my uh, friends call me Gypsy. <laughs> a blonde gypsy. Uh-huh. I'll bet you could tell my fortune. I'll bet I could. There's your piano player now. Good evening, Dave. How are you tonight? Fine, thank you. Good evening, friends. Are you in the mood? You know, that Paulson's quite a fellow. He lives in a six-sided house and raises fish and alligators. <laughs> quite a character. Have another milk? Uh, in a minute. I want to talk to him. A guy like that intrigues me. You writers, you're always picking up new material. Not only writers. Good evening. How are you? Want to play a duet? I might. I'm terrific on the accordion. That's so. Bring it down, we'll beat and squeeze. Squeeze and beat. Sometime. You know Hal Benedict? Sure. A couple of times he was in here with a redhead. So? So, I'd like to know her name. Uh-uh, that last phrase is wrong. It goes... Dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. <laughs> Darn if that isn't it. The redhead's name is Irene Donovan. Know where I can reach you? No, I don't. Why all the interest in Irene? An hour ago, Mrs. West called me. Wanted her address. I don't know about Mrs. West. Well, I'll be seeing you.
phone number? Jealous? Why not? Who's? Irene Donovan. Thanks. Yes, ma'am, in the nugget room. How about cashing a check, Mr. Cowan? Sorry, Mr. Reed, no more tonight. What's the matter? My checks were good enough before. Sorry, Mr. Reed. Okay, get your hands off me. You're not going. Sorry, but I must. Don't try to kid me. You're going to see Irene Donovan. <laughs> you are a gypsy. Come on, Hanson. I'm going to drive right by her place. I'll be glad to drop you off. Where is he? Huh? Where is he? Where's who? The milkman. At the milkman? I mean the man who ordered the... But, oh, that guy. Just left with a blonde. A blonde? You yeah. mean a redhead? Yes. Yeah. No, I mean a blonde. Are you sure? Certainly. Uh-uh. I just had a call. Well, that guy's nuts. You lost him. Red ain't gonna like it. Pardon me. Yes, ma'am? Would you please tell me where a woman finds a husband in this town? A husband? Yes. Well, we'll do the best we can. Come on. Move. I didn't do it. Quiet. Cut it out. We've got to get out of here. Where's your car? Around the corner. You can talk now. I didn't kill her. I didn't say you did. But you're on the spot. We're both on the spot. Our fingerprints are all over the place. I got there just before you did. She was... You saw her. That silver dollar in her hand, did you put it there? I don't know anything about it. Why did you go there? I thought she might know where Hal was. Why? I saw her with him several weeks ago. You, uh, you knew who she was? Not then. Mrs. West told me, tonight. Oh. You were there longer than you said. You rummaged around and found some letters, didn't you? That's my letter. Well, the police aren't dumb. You'll trip up all over the place. 
It's awfully nice of you to help me look for my husband. Oh, that's all right, ma'am. What about that cowboy friend of yours, that Tom Reed? What about him? Say, what's the matter with you? Pops, there's a prowl car headed this way. You better kiss me. Pretend we're knickers. Hey. Hey. Hey! What are you doing up here? Well, what would any fellow be doing up here with a girl, officer? A brunette. Better get going. It isn't safe parking out here at night. Yes, sir. You bet it isn't safe. Come, officer. We're interrupting them. They want to be alone. What's the matter? Did you know the lady? That was no lady. That was my wife. Hey, get your morning paper here. Okay. Okay, darling. but nobody leaves this room. This is a free country, I guess. If I want to walk out of my husband, I guess I can, I guess. No, you can't. Your husband's a suspect in a murder case. Oh, he is, is he? A murder case? And you're a material witness. Now go inside and relax. Tough night. Don't you touch me. I'll tell him you're here. Don't, don't do that. I'll tell him you're here. You want me to get home? Yes. I couldn't come back last night. If you don't believe me, it's all here in the paper. One of the worst crimes in the history of Reno. Irene Donovan, redhead beauty, once known on the New York stage as Bubbles O'Day, was murdered in a home last night. Discovered by Officer H.G. Gorham, who had been summoned by the phone. By phone to investigate strange noises in the Donovan house by a man who didn't give his name. Say, that phone thing's an angle. Sought for questioning is one Humphrey Campbell, that's me, who queried local persons regarding Miss Donovan's whereabouts early last evening. I was dying to come back to you. You mean it's true. Campbell's fingerprints were found in the murder house and were checked with his prints on the register of the Truckee River Hotel. When last seen, Campbell was wearing a herringbone suit, red tie, tinge. So I better change my clothes. You won't turn me in now, will you? That doesn't mean I believe you. Those redheads, blondes, brunettes. Darling, I can explain all that later. Order me a glass of milk like a good girl while I take a shower. service. Room service, will you please send up a large glass of milk and a pot of black coffee? Thank you. Louise, 
Did you hear anything from Oscar? Yes, he called last night. He said he made a date with you for a Mr. Copley, 9 o'clock. I got a lot to do before the cops get me. Humphrey. What about that blonde? Wait a minute. What is it? That blonde. Doesn't say a thing about her here. Oh, she picked me up. Oh, just like that. Yeah, just like that. It was so deliberate, I figured she had an angle. I know that angle. Oh, Louise, will you stop acting like a suspicious little... this exit. Well, she was in the Donovan house and... I heard voices in there. One of them was a man's voice. A man's voice? Yes. Oh, you must mean my radio act. I have the most wonderful idea for a radio act. I play all the voices. Men's, women's, children's, even animals. You do? Yes. Like this. Henry, get that dog away from Juja. Why, that dog will take care of itself. Oh, Daddy, look at Spotty. Henry, why, that dog is biting him. Juja, stop biting Spotty. Yikes, 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 yikes. How was it? It was fine. It was all right. I'll take that. Who's the coffee for? Me. Then who's the milk for? Me. You drink coffee and milk? Yes, I sort of use the milk as a chaser. I want to see this. With a milk chaser. Mm -hmm. I must try that sometime. I'm free. Ah, I've been poisoned. Oh, no, I know you love me. You were too rich. I hate you. That darn milk. I'll get a rash. You're wonderful to get a rash over me. This is an awful honeymoon. It's nine o'clock. I got a date with Copley. Humphrey, don't leave me now. Well, the people are depending on me. This is my fault I got mixed up in this. I didn't want to make coat. Humphrey. You better do something. You don't fool me this time. Look what you did. The entrance is in front. I never use them. I have a date with you if you're coupling. I'm Copley. I'm Copley. Oh, uh, you're Mr. Campbell. Yes. Flack told me that you were working for Warren Benedict. We need local help. I see. I, uh, I take it you know I did some work for Hal Benedict. Yes, yes, we figured. What's in it? 
Oh, that's Flax's department. He'll be fair. Uh, sit down. Uh. Thanks. Now, uh, what was it you wanted to know? Al hired you to get some letters back from Irene Donovan, right? That's right, that's right. Uh, she had his letters. Threatened to use them if he married Rose Madden. Did you get them? No. No, he called me to lay off about two weeks ago. How about the old man and Mrs. West? Think he'll marry her? They used to say it was her foreman, Belding. Nice-looking woman. Yeah. Widow. Uh, Reno variety? Oh, no, the McCoy. Yeah. Her husband was killed about uh, three years ago. Deer hunting accident. Deer hunting accident, huh? Yeah. What do you know about Benedict's foreman, Tom Reed? Well... Oh, there you are. What in the name of Beth the Cat could you do that for? Oh, it was a dull night, Oscar. Say, let, let me have $200. I may need it. And then go into a huddle with Mr. Copley. You can't spend money in the Bastille. <laughs> Get the lowdown on those folks I mentioned, will you? Right now, I've got to whip up a nice air-conditioned alibi. Right. Long distance? I want to talk to Mr. Lionel Packard, Murray Hotel, New York City. It's important. It's a matter of life and death. You using my telephone to call New York? Quite all right, Mr. Copley, quite all right. Oscar takes care of all those little things. <laughs> nice location you've got. Huh? Coffins. That's the back of Darwin's mortuary. Oh, charming. Nobody goes in or out. Well, there are exceptions, officer. This is my room. Oh. It's Campbell. Well, I changed my mind. I came back. Aha. As soon as my back is turned, you entertain strange men. Not strange and not very entertaining. The chief of police. Bates is the name. About time you showed up. You kept me awake all night. Well, please don't sit up on my account, chief. I guess you know you're in trouble, Campbell. Where were you last night? All night? I, uh, I, uh, I spent the night at the Little Gem Auto Court. Uh, before that, uh, what about Donovan? Oh, uh, Irene Donovan. Well, I have a writer friend in New York, Lionel Packer, and he knew Donovan when she was there in the theater, so he asked me to look her up. I suppose your friend didn't know her name, so you had to go around asking people for it. Well, you see, he knew her as Bubbles O'Day. That was her stage name. Now, whereabouts in New York does your friend live? The Murray Hotel. Here, follow through. The chief, maybe, uh, maybe I didn't explain very well. You're a married man, aren't you? Nope. Well, we, her and I, but she and I just got married yesterday. And last night we had a battle. Well, here I was, chief, on my honeymoon, and my wife mad at me, you see? No. Oh. Well, I couldn't let her get away with it. Not starting out like that. So I yell, I'm going to get out of here and never come back. And she yelled, all right, go ahead. So I did. It's still a bad alibi. I might have believed you, except I talked to your wife first. What? You told me about Donovan and the auto court. But first you picked up Gypsy Toland. Please, gee, don't worry. Your wife told us about her, and that's why we're not sticking a murder rap on you. Oh, you're not? You're not? You were with Mrs. Toland when Donovan was killed. Well, then I guess that washes me up, doesn't it? No! Let me get out of here before I go nuts and stop believing you. Oh, Louise, listen. Louise, listen to me, would you? No! Please, I... Louise, I can explain that. That silver dollar in the redhead's hand bothers me. Maybe it was Dollar Day. I've heard of that kind of a trademark somewhere. Somebody must have left it there. Well, that's silly, a murderer with a trademark. Bartender, have you a house phone here? Right here, sir. Thanks. <laughs> Look, naturally, that guy at the slot machine is one of Bates' men, or I'm gargantuan. This is Tolan's room, please. 
convenient. The blind friend's right here in the hotel. Yes, and on our floor, too. <laughs> Hello, Gypsy. Uh oh, Mr. Campbell. I was wondering last night why you were so anxious to get away. I should have known there was a woman in the case. There's only one woman in the world for me. How about having dinner tonight and talking things over? Why, yes. Six? Right. Something about that gypsy dame that doesn't stack up. It's interesting being a detective's wife. <laughs> I don't like it. Old man Benedict wants to see you over at Mrs. West Farm immediately. New developments? He wouldn't talk over the phone. He seemed very disturbed, very. I'm on my way. Not without me this time. All right, all right, but we'll have to go out the back way or we'll have company. Uh, where's the men's washroom? That way, sir. Thank you. Beautiful country, isn't it? Yes. Maybe someday we could have a honeymoon here. Yes. I deserve it.
They've gone. Come on. Do you recognize any of them? Must be friends of yours. Look like the gang from the Linden Bank. Then that's why. They were afraid you'd put a finger on them. That's it. I was right. No, the silver dollar. That's the Red Harris gang trademark. I just got it. Red Harris? Yeah. When I was a reporter in St. Louis, I was playing pinochle with some cops one night. When a guy came in and said he'd found a stiff with five slugs in his chest and a silver dollar in his hand. He said that was the Red Harris way of letting a guy know he was peeved. But what's that got to do with you? Did you ever do anything to the Red Harris gang? No, but they evidently want to do something to me. What? Those holes. Indians. Benedict, touch your kid. If you want him, it's worth 50 G's. Put the money in a gunny sack and have Harry Belding leave it at the old Lacey mine at nine tonight. We will phone your ranch after we get the dough and tell you where you'll find Hal. Call the law and you won't see him again. I received that this morning at my Reno office. Juan, we've got to call in the police. Not yet. I want to see Hal back alive. I wonder why they picked you out to carry the dope. I don't know, I'm sure. If we call the cops, the chief might get the idea that Hal isn't kidnapped at all. You know where the mine is? Sure. Take the money up there at nine tonight. Leave it and hike back here. Mr. Benedict, you'll stay in town at your office. Mrs. West will stay here at the ranch and let us know as soon as you show up. That is, uh, if you show up. Are you hinting that I'd beat it with that money? I don't know what might happen at that mine. Reed, you'll wait at the Benedict Ranch until you get a call to go and get Hal. I want you all where you won't gum things up. Suppose they don't release him. Well, we'll have to take that chance, that's all. I suppose you'll be waiting in the mine to shoot it out with whoever it is. No, Humphrey. Oh, that's all right. We were just married. You think I'm completely crazy? Now, please, all of you follow my instructions. I'll take this letter along. See you later. Come on, Mrs. Campbell. Get that information for me, will you, honey? And you better have that rear window faced. I'll meet you in Copley's office in about an hour. Keep going. You first. FBI, huh? You're wasting your time, boys. I'm not the man you're looking for. No? Show me his picture, Mac. <laughs> Say, that does look like me, doesn't it? Where'd you get it? It is you. You sketched from memory. Rather from the memories of a dozen people that saw you in a bank in St. Louis. Yeah? I suppose you were never in St. Louis. Well, I spent a winter there. I was a reporter on the St. Louis Press, 1936. You were there in 1938, and you were plenty busy. 1938? No, no. I was working in Los Angeles for Oscar Flack. You can call him room 465. Check Flack. Right. You seem to know we wanted you. Some other men have been confusing me with that bird. What other men? I wish I knew. They're unfriendly. Say, wait a minute. You're the two men who called on Warren Benedict a couple of weeks ago to check on the whereabouts of his son, aren't you? Keep talking. Didn't somebody call you a while back and tell you that young Benedict knew where you could find Red Harris? Now that gives you away. You're the man we think you are. What's the matter? This is Flack, all right. I checked his credentials. Sure it is. Campbell's been with me since 1937. You fellas have made a mistake. You must have a twin, then. What about Harris? Oh, nothing. I just heard he was around. Say, uh, who is this twin of mine? He draws money out of banks with a gun. So Tom Reed and Rose Madden were once engaged, huh? They even take out marriage license, but 
no get married. Why? Why didn't they get married, Severino? Come on, Severino. You promised to tell my friends everything. What a temperamental Oriental, Oscar. Mercenary fellow. Yeah. Mr. Benedict no want them get married. Want Rose marry Mr. Hal. What about Mrs. West? Mr. Benedict like her very much. But Mr. Hal holler and say she only want get Benedict money. What did Benedict say to all this? He tell Mr. Hal if he no like Mrs. West, he can get the devil out. Also, I forget. <laughs> he forgets, Oscar. More grease. Now I remember. Five, six weeks back, Mr. Hal called Mr. Reed Big Crook. Say he steal horses from Benedict Ranch and sell for himself. What did Reed do about that? Punch him in nose. What else? That's all. Finished. Honest. No wonder Benedict fired you. Any houseboy who couldn't pick up more dirt than that in two years. Uh, call me tomorrow. We may need you again. Thank you. Is very nice work. Did uh, Saffarino help any? That's good work, Copley. See what else you can dig up for us. Thanks. I'll keep on trying. Come on, darling. Coming, Oscar? Just a minute. I want to take up something important with Copley. Uh, yes? Those rabbits. How do you make them? Show me, will you? Certainly. Like this. Oh, Oscar, for the love of Pete, I'll show you how to make rabbits. Better use a white handkerchief. <laughs> What a day. I thought we'd never get away from Bates. Really me all over again. Oh, well, at least you don't have to leave for that appointment with the kidnappers for another hour. It's only 7.30. Yes, thank goodness. Darling. Don't look now, but it's 8.30. Well, wish me luck, honey. Mm -hmm. Oh, now, don't start that again. This killer isn't playing patty cake, you know. Now, will you be reasonable? Oh, darling. Don't look what you've done. Just for that, give me a handkerchief. Why don't you use a bath towel? Now, smart guy. Louise, cut it out. I've got to meet Oscar. I'm not going to let you out till you promise to take me along. Let me out, Louise. Not until you promise. Humphrey, you'd better make up your mind pretty soon. You've only 20 minutes to get there. comes to the mine for the dough, we'll have to pass this way. We'll get him on the way back. Oh, wait, you, 20? It's Red Harris. Save it as a payment on that mink coat, Oscar. It'll pay for one of the buttons. Well, we'll know in a few minutes. Oh, 
this place gives me goose pimples. On you, they look good. Smarted us, tricked us out of position. Come on. It's building. The money? The money? Oh, that's gone. There's a car coming. There's been an accident and I... Melody. Campbell told you to stay at your office in town. I couldn't stay away. I was afraid Mrs. West was in trouble. Very convenient. All right, wait outside. You should have told me you were a detective. Two people have been killed. Now maybe you'll work with us. That's fair enough, Chief. Then quit hedging. I happen to know Rose Madden was in the Donovan house last night. You don't say. And I'll tell you why she was there. Why? To cover up for somebody. Read. All right, Reed. Where'd you tell Reed to stay tonight? At Benedict's Ranch. You weren't there when we phoned right after Belding was killed. No, I, uh, I had to go to Reno at 6 for a truckload of feed. And on the way back, the truck bogged down the mud hole on the Geiger Pass detour. And? Well, it took me till 9.30 to get the truck out. And when I got back to the ranch, I found out you were calling me, so I came right over. That's your alibi, eh? Everybody in town knows there's a mud hole on that detour. If you think I had anything to do with it, I like building. <laughs> Cain like Dable. All right, wait outside. Yeah? For you. Hello? Police have picked up Paulson, Mr. Campbell. He's the piano player in the Nugget Room. Yeah, they're questioning him at the station. Right, right. I'll stick around down there and see what I can learn. Thanks. Who was that? The murderer? Called to give himself up? <laughs> so Paulson is one of your possibilities too, huh, Chief? Sure. He used to run around with Donovan. Say, that gal certainly believed in the good neighbor policy. You were also thinking about Mrs. West. You were wondering whether that deer hunting accident wasn't really a murder. You interest me. Go on. By Jove, I've got it. Young Benedict got proof that Mrs. West shot her husband. He confided in Irene Donovan. Then they had a row, and she told Mrs. West. So, Mrs. West and Belding killed Hal to keep him from talking. Then when Donovan demanded a payoff, Belding put a knife in her. I don't believe it. Too gory. No, 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 Oscar. Let's continue. Then Belding had something on Mrs. West. So she staged the kidnapping to get him out of the way. She followed him out on the highway, hailed him. When he stopped, she shot him and drove the station wagon into the ditch. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, except it's a mile from the ditch to here. There were no other cars at the ranch. And she certainly didn't have time to walk back before we got here. 
I told you it was no good. I say it's young Benedict himself. By this time, he's buying a ticket for Pango Pango. Well, you won't need me anymore tonight, Chief. I'm going back to town and find out if I still have a wife. Get you at the hotel if I need you. Fine. Coming, Oscar? Yeah. Oh, uh, there's one thing I forgot to tell you, Chief. That convenient mud hole of reeds, the detour. If I was going to kill a guy, and I knew he was coming along that road, I'd wait for him to slow down at the mud hole. Thanks. Uh, one thing I forgot to tell you about Mrs. West. People up this way ride horses. Think it over. Coming, Humphrey? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any luck? Hey, Chief! Look! That Campbell wasn't so screwy after all. Aren't you coming up? In a minute, Oscar. I've got one last hunch that might pay off. Hunch? I'm gonna get some sleep. Fine thing. You stood me up at dinner. Who ran out on me last night? Well, I had things to do. Look, there's a moon tonight. A big copper-colored moon. How about you and I finding a nice quiet hilltop? I don't trust moons. I'd rather gamble. A uh, roulette? Not here. At the embassy. The croupiers are much better looking. I'm all yours. Wonderful. I'll go get my coat. <laughs> Mrs. Campbell, if you want me to call you if I saw your husband. He's in the bar now. Oh, he is, is he? Thanks. He's waiting for me at the bar now. Right. Take my car. Oh, what's the matter with mine? I think you prefer this one. Go what goes on here? What happens to every man who falls for you? This is what happens to guys at Double Cross Red, and you should have known that, Stafford. So that's the guy's name, Stafford. I'm not Stafford. I knew you'd be yellow, the way you shot Red's partner in the back. That's why Red's mad at Stafford, huh? Well, I don't blame him. But I'm not Stafford. Shut up. Hit him again, Marty, and I'll kick you right out of this car. Okay, I'll save him for Red. He says he isn't Stafford. He's a cockeyed liar. Ask Mr. Hoover's boys. They checked up. You can wait in there. I'll let you have when I'm through. 
Maybe he isn't lying, Red. Coming out, I thought it over, and there's something wrong. All right, all right. I know there is, but I'm going to make it right. Why do you suppose I came out here? Because you're a sucker for a woman. You always were. Oh, Fred, come on, give me credit for some sense. After meeting you fellas this afternoon, if I were Stafford, I'd be a million miles away by now. I wanted to come out here tonight. <laughs> That's why I looked her up. I should have knocked you off, Hank. Only I wasn't sure then. Knock me off and they'll get you for three murders. Uh, you're nuts. I mean it. A Donovan Dame. Somebody found your trademark on it. The cops know it's yours. Don't, Fred. He's right, they had it in the paper. Well, how about it? Should I call my boss? What for? To keep him from calling the cops. You see, he knows where I am. If I'm not back by one o'clock... Ah, uh, you make me sick with your crawling, Stafford. Jake! Marty! How did you get here? Who's the babe? My wife. Well, I'm sorry, lady. I got nothing against you, but I guess I'll have to take care of the both of you. What do you mean? He thinks I'm a guy named Stafford. Are you? Now, Louise, we're in trouble. This is Red Harris. Oh, the one I looked up in the library this afternoon. Red Harris! Who's got me in the library? She was looking up your background in some old St. Louis newspapers. I figured you could help me with the Donovan case. You see, that ought to prove that I'm not Stafford. Don't you see, Red? Somebody in Reno knows you. Somebody spotted you and used your trademark on the murdered woman. Who oh, put it there? That's what I want to find out. You happen to know Dave Paulson who plays piano in the Nugget Room? No, I don't hang around those joints. Oh, you don't. Do you know Tom Reed, a tall fellow with a bushy hair? No, I don't know him. Say, Red, how long is he going to keep this up? Not long. There's a widow named Marion West. What about her? I don't know any widows. That leaves the Benedicts. Al Benedict? Don't know him. Do I, honey? No, Red. You don't know those people, huh? Not under those names. Then there's only one thing to do. You'll have to go back with me and look those people over. Ha! Listen to him. I'm going back with him. He thinks he's going back. What's the penalty for murder in Nevada, Red? I think they put you in a gas chamber. It's nice and easy, I guess. Shut up. He's right, Red. Are you getting soft? I don't want to see you die. So far, they only want you for robbery. Ah, can it. No one will see you, Red. All you have to do is stand outside a window and look in a room at some people. Then you can powder. Yeah. And before I get out of town, you'd have the cops on my trailer pick up the reward. Forget it. I've got an idea. Now, Louise, this is serious. No, really, I have. He's afraid you'll double-cross him. You'll bet your life I am. If he keeps me with him as sort of a hostage while he's identifying the murderer, then if anything should happen, if he's double-crossed, then... No. Not bad. I take your dame along with me just in case, and you go along with Gypsy. If I am devil cross, she knows what to do. Oh, no, that's too dangerous. I won't permit it. Now, wait a minute. It's all right. It's all right. The little lady's got ideas. Ha! Huh. That's a new twist. Me putting the finger on a murderer. <laughs> I better call Oscar. Who's Oscar? Oscar's my boss. If you ask me, it's a screwball notion. I'm not asking you, Oscar. Get Bates to round up all of our friends. Bates holds you in high esteem at the moment. He found the body where you told him to look. Well, anyway, get after Bates right away. Here's the idea, Roscoe. I've got a guy who wants to look at them without being seen. Say, how about Copley's office? That has a big window facing an alley. No, I can't tell you any more now, Oscar. And please keep your mouth shut. You can be back here in a couple of hours. Watch from behind these boxes. I get it. What's in the boxes? Coffins. That's an undertaking, Jordan. All right. Keep your gun on this guy. I ain't taking any chances. It'll be all right, John. Get going. Here? 
Inside. Where are the cops? There aren't any. How come? Well, the body they found wasn't Hal, so Bates eliminated everybody else, and he's looking for young Benedict on a murder charge. Oh. Bates told them they could go home if they'd stop here on their way. Say, what's this conference all about? You'll see. Are you the reason we're here? What is this? I'm sorry to bother you, folks. This won't take long. I want each of you to stand here and face the window, please. Why that particular spot? There couldn't by any chance be an audience out there. Mr. Benedict? No, Warren, don't do it. You don't know who may be out there. Please, Marion, let's get it over with. Mrs. West? Paulson. It's rather silly. Like taking a bow when there's nothing to take bows for. Maybe there is. You're way behind. Bates has given all the credit to another gentleman. I beg your pardon? Hal Benedict. Yes, I know. Thank you. Miss Madden, please. There's no reason to torment these people. Chief Bates has released them. I'm not going to let you play small-time detective with a lot of silly games. Are you afraid to have her stand at the window because she was in the Donovan house last night and stole some letters? Hal wrote those letters. They accused me of stealing cattle from his father. It was Hal who stole the cattle. I wanted those letters so Tom wouldn't be implicated if anything had happened to Hal. Well, in that case, you're in the clear. Please. Maybe you're worried because you can't explain where you were when Belding was killed. That story about getting stuck in the mud is pretty thin. I'll tell you where he was. Tom and I were together in Virginia City. We got married. Rose. I'm sorry, but none of this would have happened if you hadn't tried to make me marry Hal. Please. Tom. Well, I guess that just about cleans up the games. You can all... Get it! Everybody inside. Louise! Louise! Here I am. Are you all right, darling? I'm black and blue. I'll never get the gravel out of my hands. What about Red? Did he recognize anyone before they got him? I don't know. Everything happened so fast. They must have been hiding out. When you pulled down the shade, we started up the alley and they jumped out. But didn't they give him a chance? Red started shooting just as soon as he saw them. That's when I hit the dirt. So you're mixed up with this. In a way? Call the coroner. Come inside. You've got some explaining to do. All right, you've explained everybody but yourself. I've told you before we were trying to trap a murderer. Mm-hmm, with Red. We found him for you, didn't we? You got him. What are you kicking about? It wasn't you who called us. I know your voice. Oscar, I told you not... You don't think I called him. It wasn't he. It was the same guy who called a couple of weeks ago and said Hal Benedict knew where Harris was hiding. Somebody had to butt in. We had it all figured out that Red could put his finger on the murderer. And you had to shoot him. You just told me you got Harris. Good work. Oh, great work. It just puts me back almost to where I started. Listen, detective. It puts you back right where you started. That body we found, it was embalmed. Embalmed? Yeah. Now, you tell me what young Benedict was doing, snatching embalmed bodies out of undertaking parlors. There, there, don't cry. We'll get your murderer. Oh, you will, will you? Sure. Well, maybe this will help you. The person you're looking for tied in with Irene Donovan to blackmail Hal Benedict. When Hal threatened to tell the cops, the killer waited for him on the mud hole by the detour and killed him. That wasn't Hal's body. I know. That's where our bird made his mistake. They always do, you know. You see, the killer wanted the police to think that Hal had killed somebody and then beat it. So he snatched an embalmed body from Darwin's mortuary and substituted it for Hal's. But Oscar and I got in town and started to question people about Irene Donovan. 
One of them was the killer. He was worried we might get to Irene and find out about Hal. So Irene Donovan was killed to close her mouth. Before that, the killer had spotted Red Harris in town. So he used Red's silver dollar trademark to implicate him. Having gone to all that risk without getting any money, our killer decided to cash in by sending the ransom note. And he picked Harry Belding to deliver the dough. Now, when Belding got to the ranch gate, the killer shot him and took the money. Tonight, he was informed that we'd planned a show-up for the suspects. And he figured we'd located Red Harris to identify one of them. So he tipped off the federal men to get Harris and keep him from identifying him. There's only one person who was tied up with Irene Donovan, knew enough about everybody else, including Red Harris, was in on all the plans I was making, and had easy access to a mortuary to... It's coming! Put that light switch at the door! He got me. You got me. Come on out, Flack. It's all over. We've killed your murderer. You funny thing. I was going to assist you in my coat got caught in a draw. Oh, by the way, whom do we see about the reward? Disturb, and we do mean Oscar. Hungry. You're terrific. <laughs> <laughs> 